Some people call the Su-25 the AK-47 of the skies because it's pretty simple, low tech, but it's considered very reliable and can be devastatingly effective. It's also called a flying tank because it is really heavily armoured. It's designed to fly low and close to enemy ground targets where it can deliver some pretty devastating firepower. And that's why people who know this plane well say it could be a game-changing factor in the Iraqi government's efforts to battle ISIS. Better protected than any attack helicopter. Yeah? Uh, you can hit them, yeah? you see and you kill them, yeah? and then you return to the base, you, take, you load once again, so uh, qualified pilot uh, and if technicians are good, can make up to seven, eight sorties during a day. So who's going to fly it in Iraq? Well, the Iraqi government says it still has experienced pilots. The Su-25 used to be part of the Iraqi Air Force, but that was some time ago. That was before the US invasion in 2003. Experts say it's pretty likely the pilots could come from other countries that have continued to fly the Su-25. They can somehow lease uh, unofficially or officially, the pilots either from Iran or from, uh, from Syria. Because those uh, Iraqis who knew how to fly it, I think uh, they're supposed to be either old or out of country or simply dead. Yeah, Because uh, the Saddam Air Force was already in a very poor state even 11 years ago, before the invasion. The Iraqi government turned to Russia because it's still waiting on delivery of American war plans. And Russia closed the deal quickly. The first jets were on the ground in Baghdad within days. Analysts say this is yet another message from the Russian government that this country has a big role to play on the world stage. Phil Black, CNN, Moscow. Iraq's Prime Minister says the declaration of an Islamic State by rampaging extremists is a threat not just to his country, but the entire Middle East. And while the world continues to watch for the American response, someone else is already getting involved. National Security Correspondent Jennifer Griffin has the latest from here in Washington. Russian warplanes have arrived in Baghdad to fill the vacuum after Iraqi leaders complained U.S. F-16s, not scheduled for delivery until the fall, were taking too long. Fighter jets that the Iraqis had already paid for. Iraqi pilots emerged from the Sukhoi fighter jets as rumors that Iran, too, was providing fighter planes, made their way to the State Department. Without having confirmation or providing confirmation uh, from here of these specific details, uh, that it would be um, a violation of uh, the UN Security Council resolutions uh, regarding uh, Iran sanctions if they were receiving uh, this type of material and equipment from Iran. This as the Iraqi Prime Minister warned in his weekly address that ISIS poses a threat to not just Iraq but to the entire region. No one in Iraq or any neighboring country country will be safe from these plans. The warning comes as the country's troops battle extremists in Saddam Hussein's hometown of Tikrit. This video reportedly shows Iraqi soldiers taking on rebels at Tikrit University, staging an attack to take back the city, roughly 110 miles north of the capital, Baghdad. The attempt by the Iraqi central government to regain control of several rebel-run cities comes after ISIS, or ISIL, declared itself a caliphate, renamed itself the Islamic State, and the Iraqi parliament failed to form a new government, adjourning until next week. All that resulted in this warning from Washington. Washington. ISIL is not um, fighting to take over Iraq. Uh, they're fighting to destroy Iraq. That's why it's particularly important for the political leadership to come together to place the interests of that country uh, ahead of their own political ambitions. Their ability to find political reconciliation among groups and to present an inclusive um, face to the people of Iraq who are counting on them to lead will be an important factor in determining what we do going forward. That message reiterated today by Vice President Joe Biden, who spoke by telephone with the Speaker of Iraq's Parliament, a Sunni who oversaw yesterday's Parliament session in which the Sunnis and Kurds walked out. Doug? And Jennifer, something else. U.S. officials now acknowledging that U.S. troops are operating in Somalia? 
Well, they first acknowledged this back in January. They said that for the first time since 1993, when the Black Hawk Down incident forced U.S. troops out of Somalia, they had sent some advisors back in uh, October. But now we've learned from U.S. officials that, in fact, there have been U.S. troops on the ground since 2007, up to 120 troops there so as we speak. Predates the Obama administration. Yes, correct. Jennifer Griffin, thank you. Mm -hmm.